What is up, folks? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our esports talk. A lot of controversy coming from Call of Duty this past weekend, and so many videos are yet to be out. I hope you guys all enjoy as per usual and are enjoying your mornings, afternoons, or evenings wherever you guys are. Vacation is now done. I cannot wait to make videos every single day this week, and a lot of them. Speaking of which, I would say one of the bigger videos I had thought about this past weekend was being the removal of a phase clan or Atlanta phase, I should say, of their Call of Duty team. The Atlanta phase academy member known as Siblings was. Was removed or fired this past week from the organization following homophobic slurs used on stream. Something we have sadly seen a lot of times in esports and gaming when it comes time for younger pros out there. And uh, Siblings now a victim of this and has been promptly removed from the Atlanta Phase Academy team. D2P, D2P dick riders, how you like them apples, huh? 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 Oh, T2P, you got nothing on formal. Form was so good, T2P. You're an M. <laughs> I'm an I'm an M, and you're my stream. <laughs> Thanks for supporting me. You <laughs> <it. You laughs> it. nah, T2P dick, nah, rider. dick rider. You dick rider. What's your problem, kid? Shut up. Shut up. No one cares. I don't care. Screen, I don't. I don't care if he's Michael bro. Jordan. I don't care. And even just this alone has caused, a, I would say, a, a lot of responses out there. Clayster being a prominent one to respond to this cancel culture going around Call of Duty, which in itself is very, very interesting. We'll talk about his tweets in a second. I would say the more interesting fact being that Phase Clan, unfortunately, so became notorious a few months back for having a young Fortnite pro player known as Dubs have one of the most widely seen and now heard N words, racial slur of all time in gaming. It was very, very widely viewed by a lot of people out there and um, a very, very poor circumstance and dumb decision made by the young pro who was then sentenced to an indefinite suspension and sent to sensitivity training, later rejoining the organization and team and never ever being kicked or removed from the org entirely, just being sentenced to that indefinite suspension as well as the training he did later complete and they later actually rejoined the roster. So it kind of prompted at least a question in my mind exactly why FaZe Clan treated that situation differently from the academy team of the Atlanta FaZe. My first uh, intuition would be, of course, when it comes time for bigger figures out there, they do naturally when it comes time for any scene esports sports entertainment the bigger you are the more you do get away with i know it's a sick way of thinking but that's how it works in esports too i've broken that down several times on this channel but it actually seems by a lot of responses out there and a close source to phase as well it's just because management is completely different from phase clan as compared to the atlanta phase the same hands who had a decision in the dubs case did not have hands on in the decision when it came time for siblings in his case and i really can't I can't argue it then. If that is the case, if management is different between those two, which is seemingly they are, it's apparently FaZe Clan in partnership with the Atlanta Esports Ventures Group over there in Atlanta, have the Atlanta FaZe spot. It's just a partnership though. Beyond the name, FaZe Clan has no control in the decisions they are making. And so supposedly, according to this source, when it comes time for the choice of siblings and his punishment, FaZe Clan, the same people who had the choice when it came time for dubs and what they would do with him, it's just not the same voice when, across those two cases, which I then, I can't complain about. It's a prominent issue when it comes time for esports and gaming about these, a variety of punishments for a variety of cases and a variety of things said by pro players out there, some of which get away with it ultimately, and others of which pay the ultimate price of losing their job entirely. I'm not going to sit here and defend Siblings' action. In fact, I would probably reinforce it as probably the right move for Atlanta FaZe to get rid of someone uh, like that who is willing to say those kind of things. I just wish when it comes time for the ultimate umbrella of FaZe, if they had treated the case fairly across the board, I would understand if Siblings felt maybe a bit wronged. Obviously, what he did was stupid incredibly stupid he'll learn from this and, and going forward if he does continue to compete he will certainly you know learn what not to say but it, it would be um, understandable if he felt wronged by an overall organization who treated a Fortnite case very different from a case of his own a Fortnite case by the way which was I, you really can't compare these cases, but it was bad. It was it was very, very bad. Now, when it comes time for Clayster's tweet as well about this and cancel culture and Call of Duty and esports, he says, it's weird how things work. An amateur playing Chicago can use a word when he's heated at the toxicity he's getting in his chat and get dropped from his team, but a pro can tell another pro the same word on stream last year and nobody cares. Cancel culture is whack people make mistakes. And Siblings did go on to um, delete a few of his tweets out there, eventually did apologize for this as well. I really do hope he learns from it, but especially when it pertains to Call of Duty, 
This just drives so many talking points. There is no 100% right thought or angle on this, which is unfortunate because I think it does spark a great talking point as not only how FaZe Clan operates, but esports in general around these kind of things. I don't want to bring up past Call of Duty cases, so I won't name names, but we have seen pro players say some very nasty things and those things be forgotten about and those players go on to be signed either way. We've also seen a case in recent times, which I've named already, so I will name it again here, that being Mutex, which is ironic because Clayster talked about cancel culture, then what about Mutex before the season even started when he was dropping some very sensitive language and thoughts on stream as well? The way he handled that ended up in him being removed from the Dallas Empire organization before the season even began. It's a case-by-case -case basis. We continue to see organizations act on these cases in a variety of ways, and it's always going to be a talking point because some organizations do not act as fairly as others, and some don't act at all. I respect Atlanta FaZe's choice here, but certainly it does have to be questioned in comparison to other cases we have seen in the Call of Duty and esports scene as general. in general. It's just a very interesting talking point, and hopefully the more we talk about this, the more that up-and-coming pros realize, okay, that guy just lost his job because of what he did. Maybe I shouldn't do that ever. What do you guys think about this? A very, very controversial case. And again, no one is 100% right in this. We just like to talk these things out as per usual. We'll be breaking down a lot of Call of Duty stuff this week. A lot of other great stuff as well. A lot of happier stuff on top of that. Until next time, drink that water. Drink that coffee. I'll catch you guys back here sometime soon. Yeah, yeah.